Hey guys, Arlisha here. Welcome to another video. So you've heard me talk about lots of different palettes before, and the majority of these palettes have a decent amount of paint in them. I have paints 12 colors, 24 colors, 30 some colors, but what if you're looking to work with less? What if you're looking to limit your palette, or if you're looking to get just a few paints to get started? Maybe something a little bit smaller, like this. So you guys may have seen these tins floating around. These actually used to be tea tins for holding loose leaf tea. These are from adagio.com and the art on them is by Kara McGee. I really love using these to make palettes because they can hold anywhere from three, six, all the way up to eight colors and they're super handy for that. So they allow me to build pretty versatile while still fairly limited palettes. When I'm recommending small sets of watercolors to people, the first thing I talk about usually is this Daniel Smith Essentials set, which is the top six colors in this palette that I'm showing you here. I really like this set because you're getting very high quality professional paints in a wide enough variety that you can learn a lot about color mixing. So included in this particular set are a warm and cool of each of the primary colors. So we have a warm and cool yellow, a warm and cool red, and the same thing for the blues. The specific colors included in this set are Hansa Yellow Light, New Gamboche, Quinacridone Rose, Pyrrole Scarlet, Thalo Blue Green Shade, and French Ultramarine. So we have a cool yellow and a warm yellow, a cool red and a warm red, and then a cool blue and a warm blue. My plan was to make a couple of quick um, color wheels for you to show you these colors, but you know how like even when you're grown, sometimes you get your right hand and your left hand confused. Y you know the difference between right and left, but sometimes you just get them mixed up. That's how I am with blues. For some reason, I always get my cool blues and my warm blues backwards. So when I was making this color wheel, the, the greens and the purples weren't really turning out the way I thought that they should. And I'm like, man, that's really weird, but I guess that's right. And then it wasn't until I was editing this footage until I went, you know what? I put ultramarine on the cool side and thalo blue on the warm side, which is completely wrong. So I apologize for getting that mixed up here because yeah. Thalo blue is the cool blue and ultramarine is the warm blue. For some reason in my brain, I always get those two backwards all the time. So I apologize that this color wheel technically is not entirely accurate. But the general idea that I wanted to show you was that even just varying the temperature of your primary colors can really diversify the range of colors that you get. And because this particular set includes all six colors, it's a, it's a really great way to learn to mix watercolors. So it really helps you to learn how to mix not just secondary colors like orange, green, and purple, but also a wide variety of colors from browns and blue grays and all kinds of fun flesh tones. And it's just, I think it's a great place to start with really high quality paint. But you don't necessarily have to use such direct primaries, which is the main thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today. So you can also vary it up by using different types of color to represent your primaries. 
So here I have some earthier colors from my Prima Marketing Decadent Pies set. I actually really like the little color wheel that those ones make. It's very earthy and soft and beautiful. And these are three different colors from that same set. And you can see that just by varying the color that we use, we're gonna get a very different variety. This last one technically doesn't really count as a color wheel because the colors that I'm using are Van Dyke Brown, Venetian Red, and and Sennelier's Ultramarine Deep. And this particular palette was inspired by another YouTuber who I've actually just recently discovered. Her name is Jenny and she, you guys, I will leave a link in the description to her channel. She's just super adorable and her videos are very informative and thorough and it's she has a really nice channel. You guys should check her out. She does really cool stuff. Anyway, she mentioned using these three particular colors to mix skin tones, so I was really excited about that. And for my tiny little palette that I'm going to be building, I also decided to include raw sienna to act as more of a yellow color, something a bit warmer. And while this particular palette may be perfectly suited for painting skin tones and different things like that, I've actually been in this really weird sort of rut lately where I've been having a lot of trouble drawing and painting people, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because that's primarily what I do. I just think I'm going to be improving and growing in my art so the the way that i have been doing things just isn't satisfying to me anymore i don't think that this will mean i will be making art that will be unrecognizable as mine in the future but it's definitely time for me to level up and do some growing so instead of applying this very well suited skin tone palette to actually painting skin tones i decided to paint something that i had before this point never painted before can you tell what it is yet Okay, maybe now you have a bit of a better view. I really like horses. Now, I'm not like, I'm not like a horse person. I mean, obviously like I'm not a centaur as far as like horse people go, but like I'm not mega into horses. My first job was actually as a stable hand working with horses, which I loved, but I've always loved the anatomy and gesture and the form of horses. They're just these huge, angular, majestic, flowing, like solid creatures. And I've sketched some in the past and really, really loved it, but I've never painted a horse. So I decided to amend that today and to paint a horse for the first time and to make it as rainbow as I could with this limited palette. It's very earthy, but still very diverse, I think. The combination of the raw sienna and the ultramarine can create some really beautiful greens, and that Venetian red, while being a fairly opaque color, can create some really beautiful pinky mixes, especially with the ultramarine to get things closer to purple, and the Van Dyke brown mixed with the ultramarine creates our deepest, darkest values. Now, that's another thing that's really important when you're looking to build a limited palette is to make sure that the colors that you have allow you to mix a wide variety not just of shades but also of values so having colors that will mix to very dark colors is really really important things that won't just get muddy or super brown but they won't get very dark so the inclusion of both Van Dyke Brown and Ultramarine allows me to have a very wide variety of values I hope you guys don't mind that the subject matter of this particular painting is very different from what I normally do, but I, I've just been feeling really stuck lately, and every time I've tried to paint a person, whether it's a portrait or just doing like sketching figure drawing, it just hasn't worked out for me for a couple of weeks now, and I hope that's just because I'm no longer satisfied with the quality of what I was making before. Not that it's bad, it's just I know that I can do better, and I know that I want to do better, so hopefully that'll just be some growth coming soon in the future. You guys know what that's like where you just, you know you're doing the same thing that you've always been doing, but all of a sudden it's just like not good enough anymore. And I'm hoping that the new things that I've been experimenting with and the things I've been learning will kind of reflect and will I'll be able to apply those when I come back to portraiture and things like that. And 
I don't know, it's just a growing time and I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. If you guys are interested in seeing more of that growth process, I've been trying to do more live streaming on Instagram. I'd like to get set up to live stream on YouTube as well, but I'm just not quite there yet. But I have been doing more live streams on Instagram at least once a week, probably going to be doing it a bit more soon. So you guys can follow me over there if you're not already to kind of be a part of the chattering, hangout, behind the scenes stuff and uh, get kind of a sneak peek on some of the things I've been working on. I, I personally really, really enjoyed this painting and it's pretty loose, but it was a lot of fun and I hope you guys like it too. Let me know if you have built tiny little limited palettes like this before and what some of your favorite colors are to include in those smaller palettes. Do you choose colors at random or do you build them specifically on color temperature or theme or mood? I'd really love to hear from you guys. I don't normally mention things like this primarily because I for primarily because I forget, but if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, I would love if you could join our little community here. And as always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. It really does mean a lot to me. And I will see you all next time. Bye.